Hi guys, do you have a relatively new Sony camera and you want your footage to go from this, hold on, I'll get out of the way, to go from this to this? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Let's talk about it. So this video is about how the new Sony cameras record gyroscopic data, and you can use that data to smooth out your footage to make it look virtually like a gimbal, at least in my opinion. And it's all based on the free software that Sony gives you called Catalyst Browse. So what I'm gonna do in this video is show you what settings you need in your camera, show you how to use Catalyst Browse on your computer, and I will also provide a free sample of a minute of footage from my own life that you guys can then use to test on Catalyst Browse. So it'll be in the description, you'll be able to download that clip, and a lot of people are curious as to how the Catalyst Browse software will work on their own personal computer. So you can use my clip, run a few tests, see if you like it or not. Sound pretty good? Of course it does. Now, I personally love the Catalyst Browse. I love the way my footage comes out of it, but there are drawbacks and I will mention them because if you look at the comments of my videos or other people's videos when they're doing Catalyst Browse, people get angry really fast because they want their cake and eat it too. You know what, like this right here is a $700 camera, my little Dougie, little ZV-E10, and he can record gyroscopic data and I can use that to get gimbal-like footage, but there are some trade-offs when you do that and I would expect it. You know what I mean? Nothing's perfect. I will give you the pros and cons. To me, the pros way outweigh the cons, but here we go. You can't use Catalyst Browse with manual lenses. If you have a manual lens, one that doesn't do autofocusing at all, one where you have to enable shoot without lens on your Sony camera, that is not communicating with your camera, so the Catalyst Browse will not record the gyroscopic data. Second con, you have to raise your shutter speed to get optimal results. The shutter speed that is recommended by me and most people is one over 200. And that sounds a lot higher than the one over 50 that people want to shoot. And the reason is, is because with the one over 200, it eliminates motion blur. Like right now I'm at a one over 50 and you see there's some motion blur. It looks pretty natural when my hands are moving around. It's what you expect to see. So when Catalyst Browse is trying to stabilize footage that has motion blur in it, it can create weird artifacts weird things can happen to your footage so it prefers no motion blur that's why you up your shutter speed now to me this is not a major drawback in the way I use the Catalyst Browse. Now, if you plan to use it to make films, things like that, go get yourself a gimbal so you can use all of the proper settings. But a lot of times what we are using Catalyst Browse for is to walk around filming our stupid faces, vlog style format. So you aren't going to need that perfectly natural motion blur because it's just your face in the frame. And here I will show you a clip. And uh, now notice number one, I look in my opinion, fairly natural walking through with this nice thing. And there is a lady coming down the pathway here. You see that lady and she's moving down. It doesn't look all stuttery. She doesn't look like she's in Saving Private Ryan. People really go bananas when you say raise your shutter speed. And if you don't want to do that, go get yourself a gimbal. I personally like the way it looks. The motion looks fine to me when it's uh, rendered in Catalyst Browse. And for the way I use it, zero complaints over here. But it is something you need to know. I personally would much rather have very smooth footage that doesn't have perfect motion blur compared to footage that has good motion blur but is shaking around like an earthquake. That footage is unwatchable footage without that 1 over 50 motion blur that is perfectly smooth very watchable. But to me, a real drawback of the 1 over 200 is the amount of light. Now, if you're so if you're recording in very low light, then raising your shutter speed is going to be more difficult on your camera. You're going to have to bump your ISO even more and you may get very grainy footage. Again, I would rather some grain than herky jerky footage, but there comes a point when you're in a low light situation where you should not probably use Catalyst Browse. I mean, you'd be better off with a gimbal, but if you're in situations that low light anyway, I don't know how your footage is going to come out. I find that uh, the Sony cameras, most of them are pretty good up until you can even use it right up to ISO 32,000. So for me, I haven't encountered a low light situation where I have not been able to use Catalyst Browse, but uh, you know, 
your mileage may vary. Oh, and something I should mention as well is that when you're raising your shutter speed and you're under artificial light, like my lights here are studio lights, that's fine. But if you're under artificial lights, fluorescent lights, things like that, as you raise your shutter speed, the, um, the shutter is actually gonna catch up to the flickering, because lights, they, they flicker, the frequency. So in, in North America, it's 60 hertz, and in uh, the rest of, most of the rest of the world, it's 50 hertz. So uh, the light pulsates at a certain speed. So as you raise your shutter speed, the camera is gonna be able to pick up that pulsing of the lights, and there's nothing you can do about that. Well, there is. In post, there's a couple of fixes. And you know what? I will link uh, in the description a video that helps you fix light flicker. If you are trying to do Catalyst Browse under artificial lighting and you do get that flicker, you can try this fix. But the truth is, as you raise your shutter speed and you see that flickering, there's not much you're going to do about that. So what you want to do is either try Catalyst Browse at 1 over 50 and see how that looks in your footage or don't use it at all because once that flicker is in your footage it is really tough to get out you can try that fix that's going to be in the description but uh, let that be known when you're outside no big deal you're under studio lights no big deal but and in truth there are times even when i'm shooting at 1 over 50 not with the sony cameras with any camera and you're around certain light bulbs that flicker a certain way you're just going to get flicker in your footage it does happen i film at some comedy clubs that use some cheap lighting and uh it just flickers all the time i have to take my gh5 in there and adjust the shutter angle just perfectly to get rid of that flicker which is something i wish the sony cameras have but they don't so this is just be warned under artificial lighting, as you raise your shutter speed, you may see some light flicker. And two more drawbacks that you must be aware of if you're using the free software is that if you shoot in 10-bit, you won't be able to output your footage after it's rendered in 10-bit. It will turn into 8-bit, which sucks. And you also can't do batch export. So uh, you have to do one clip at a time. And since the clips take a long time, that is a real pain in the butt. You can change that by buying the Catalyst Prepare. It is a monthly subscription from Sony, but to me, it's it's pretty expensive, so I'm uh, cheap. So I will put up with the 8-bit, and I will put up with the one clip at a time. But if you're going to do a ton of Catalyst Browse and you want it to be in 10-bit, then you're going to have to pony up the money for the paid software, the Catalyst prepare. So, uh, you know, and the last drawback is workflow and length of time. You, of course, have to go in to a different software program. You're going into the Catalyst Browse. You are trying to render the clip and the stabilization. Usually on my computer, it takes about three minutes for every one minute of footage. So uh, when you get the file, when you download it from my description, you can see how long it would take on your computer and you can judge whether or not that is something you are willing to put up with. But I will say stabilizing footage in any editing program is going to take some time. So I got about three minutes for every one minute in Catalyst Browse, but it took a minute and a half in the final cut footage, which is certainly half the time, but the results were nowhere near as good. I will show you a side-by-side -side of the results of the final cut stabilization and the Catalyst Browse stabilization now. I think double the rendering time is worth it for me to get more than double the results. And some people ask, does this help with rolling shutter? And it absolutely does. Here is a rolling shutter test with the Catalyst Browse off and then with the Catalyst Browse on. I see when I paused it, how much curve there was in the wood in the standard footage with the Catalyst Browse, it is much straighter. It provides a much better situation. And let me just say, if that workflow sounds terrible for you, you should really look into something like an Olympus camera. This is the Olympus EM1 Mark II. I guess their system, their OM system now, they just changed their name. But anyway, they have the best stabilization in the game. Uh, Panasonic is also extremely good with their new cameras. But Olympus, uh, with the lens stability and the camera stability together, I've never seen 
anything like it. It's absolutely fantastic. If you're someone who's desperate for stability, but you do not want to go the Catalyst Browse Sony route, my suggestion would be look into Olympus cameras. You will be pleasantly surprised. I love them very much. But we're here to talk about Catalyst Browse, so let's go into the computer and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so once you've downloaded Catalyst Browse, I'll leave a link in the description as well for that. So uh, just go straight to the Sony site, download Catalyst Browse, not Catalyst Prepared, go with the free Catalyst Browse for now. And then uh, once you drag your your, fo your files off your SD card. Uh, I kept mine here in Camera Crisis in my Catalyst Browse test. And now you see the uh, two footage pieces that, uh, footage pieces? <laughs> the two files, the footage pieces that I'll be dealing with here. We have uh, a vertical video because a lot of people were asking me, will I still be able to record my TikTok booty popping on the go, on the move out in public? And I'm like, absolutely, your booty will never look smoother then with Catalyst Browse, it works fine, but there are a couple of extra buttons you have to press to keep your vertical video vertical. See, because a lot of the new Sonys, like the little ZV-E10, if you just turn it vertically, then the camera's like, oh, he's doing a vertical video now, and then it'll shoot it that way, and you won't have to change it in post like you used to back in the dinosaur days. So what's great, that's great. And even Catalyst Browse, you'll be able to stabilize that footage as well. And as long as you uh, press the flip rotate button, which I will show you, then uh, it will keep it in that manner. But first we'll go with the standard footage here. This is the clip that I am going to be giving you guys right here, this C0049.mp4. Now what you do, you see these uh, little uh, film strip with uh, the wobbles on it. That means that the gyroscopic data has been recorded and you go down here to the bottom and you see it says stabilize so you click on stabilize and in the oh that was my magic mouse just making it big and small but you click it on um if you go over here to manual don't leave it in auto auto often crops it in way too much and you i find about 90 percent works well and a 10 percent crop you will see virtually no quality loss quantity quality loss on your footage so you go over to manual you slide that slider, or you can just type it in. I just type it in. Who's, who has time to slide? 90%. So there's 90%, and you can also preview this file right now to see if that, in fact, is the type of uh, smoothness you'd like. Now, uh, it's a little bit choppy here because I'm doing a screen record, but that is normally smooth when you're playing it back. But for me, the 90% is good. So uh, once you're satisfied with that, you go over here to this little icon. And um, now these are a couple of things that you're gonna wanna click here. So where you want that clip to export to. Personally, I want it to export to exactly where I have my original clip. So I will put it in Catalyst Browse Test. Now you do wanna rename your files because you don't wanna replace your old files. So I like to rename the files with cat for Catalyst Browse. Have you? crack the code and then I will put it down into clip name because I want the clip to have the same name except cat in front of it so I know this is a version of that clip and then everything else you want to leave the same so all of this except right down here you can use mark in and out points you see this check mark so if you want to spend say say the first five minutes of your clip is no, nothing useful and you want to get rid of that, you can move your in and out points right here and then Catalyst Browse will only render the clip in the in and out point. That may save you a lot of rendering time if you've got a bunch of garbage at the beginning or at the end of your clip. Now I'm very efficient, so I have no garbage. No, there's no fat on this bone. So um, I'm going to render the entire clip and then you just go down here to export and uh, it will remind you, hey, you can't batch export. That's what this screen is. Go buy our program where you can batch export. I'm not going to buy your program. I'm too cheap, Sony. So here we go. I say OK, and then it renders the file. Now, I'm not going to let it go this whole time because this should take about three minutes, and that would be boring for you. So I'll cut back when it's done. OK, so we're back. That took uh, three minutes and 15 seconds, according to my watch here, for that 
minute and two second clip. So the render file is complete. So I'll press the X there and the stabilized clip because I want to go back to the other one. I'll say this and it says it, the adjustments won't be retained after exiting. It's like, yeah, okay, who cares? So now I'll go back and as you can see, the new Catalyst Browse clip is here, cat C O O four nine. Now I will tell you about the, um, the uh, vertical video here. And in case, uh, ju just to make sure, like look over here at these settings here, because we're going to use basically the same thing, but make sure optimize image quality is on. It's usually on by default, I think, when you get the program, but make sure that one is, because sometimes they do it for encoding speed, and why would you do that? You want to do the uh, optimum image quality here. These are the advanced settings, okay? I should say that, that um, they won't pop up immediately. This will be off by default, so you turn that on, and then it's especially important here for this vertical video, because as you can see, this use, flip, rotate, and de-squeeze settings. So if you have a clip where you have de-squeezed it in camera, or you have flipped it like the uh, Sony ZV-E10, then uh, you want to keep those settings by turning that on. Again, you can use mark in and out points here, make sure uh, optimum image quality is set, and then you can stabilize this footage here, the same thing, and you see once again that it cropped in too much for my liking. It's blown out because it's HLG, I'll be applying a lot later. Don't do any adjustments to your clip other than stabilization in Catalyst Browse, then just edit as usual. That's all I use the program for, stabilize the footage, and then uh, stick it in my regular Final Cut editing program, and then I do it. But here, I will switch this again to 90%, and then I will stabilize the clip, go to my export settings here, just click on export, and uh, the same thing will pop up. Hey, buy our software. No, I'm gonna do it one at a time. You can't get me with your money. And then you render the file again, and the exact same thing will happen, and Bob is your uncle. Say hi to Bob. So as you can see, the results can be amazing, especially if you're using your Sony cameras in a vlogging format. The Catalyst Browse to me is well worth the trouble that it takes to get that footage, but uh, you know, it's up to you. I'm just showing you now how I do it. I will give you the clip, let you see. You evaluate for yourself whether or not you wanna go get yourself a gimbal, because let me tell you something, gimbals are their own pain in the buttocks. So, uh, you know, don't think that they are just Nothing but sunshine and roses? Is that the expression? I don't know. You gotta balance them if you wanna change a lens. You gotta carry around this extra thing. You gotta charge the batteries in those. I'm just saying that they aren't super easy to use. And whenever I can avoid using a gimbal, I like to do that. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, come on back and see us again. We'll uh, we'll do some more stuff, all right? I mean, of course we're gonna do stuff. I'm not just gonna sit here and look at the camera. Unless you guys are willing to watch that, because I'll do it. Anyway, we'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.